Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and the other day Apple released watchOS 11 Beta 1. watchOS 11 Beta 1 is available to developers, the public beta should be out sometime in July, with a final release to the public sometime in September. Now this particular update was a fairly large update for my Apple Watch Ultra 2 coming in at 1.7 gigabytes. It overwrites the older update, but it's still a pretty large update overall. And as far as the watchOS 11 supported devices, well, they did drop support for some of them. So currently you need an Apple Watch Series 6 or newer, an Apple Watch Ultra, Ultra 2, or SE second generation. WatchOS 11 does not support any other specific watches, so unfortunately they got rid of the Series 5 and Series 4. Now as far as the build number, let's take a look at that, and then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go into our settings, then we'll go down to General here. Under general, we'll go to about and under about, you can see the build number. It's pretty long at 22 R five, two, eight, four. Oh, this particular build does include some new features and changes, but it's not as big as last year's update with watch OS 10. Now, if we go back to settings, you may have already noticed we have an option for smart stack. If we go into smart stack, we have live activities and those live activities will actually show on our smart stack that shows at the bottom of the device. So you'll see auto launch live activities. You can turn this off and and it says show live activities on wrist down. So you have a bunch of different options to customize this however you'd like, and you'll see live activities for things such as Uber, or maybe you ordered DoorDash, any app that supports live activities will show up here. If we go back, we have widget suggestions as well, and then you can just turn that on and off. If we go into our live activities here, scroll up, you'll see that this actually changes based on the day and what you're doing. For example, I had a medication reminder that I set just as an example that popped up here, and then you can see all of the different ones. So it's very familiar, but that's a little bit of a change. We do have a new watch face. And if I scroll over here, let's go back out, scroll over, you'll see we have a new photo watch face. It changed on its own and you actually customize it from the phone. So if we go into the watch app, you'll see it has photos. If we go to our face gallery, we have photos here. And if we go into that, we have some options with it. So we can add it and then we can choose the photo that we want to show specifically. And then it has time customization. So you can change it from dynamic to extra large to large. It will change on its own if you leave it on dynamic. And then we can go all the way to small. So if you want to customize it, you can see all of the different looks here. We can also change the font below. So you'll see here, you will need iOS 18, by the way, to use this. And then you've got different numeral options. So based on Arabic Indic, you've got a bunch of different ones here, Telugu, Urdu, and Odia, and a bunch of different other ones. So based on how you want to view this, you'll have the option along with styles that go with black and white, monotone, tritone, and others. And then you can change the color of the time itself. So if you want it to stand out, you can change that and then change complications if you want to add them to the bottom of it. Maybe we'll add one here as well for audiobooks, and then we'll add this. So we should have some here. There it's added, and it should be on the watch itself. So let's restart here and go back in, and you'll see that we have our photo, and it does take a minute sometimes to actually add. It's been a little bit buggy, but that's because it's an early beta. Apple has added the Translate app to the watch, so if we scroll all the way down, you'll see that we have an option for Translate. So I have the translate app here. I can select the language I want to translate from and to, and we have everything from Arabic to Chinese, to Dutch, French, German, Indonesian, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, Thai, Turkish, all the way down to Vietnamese. So those are your options. And again, you can just use it back and forth. So if I want to translate to someone, hi, how are you today? We'll give it a second and it translates, then you can play it back. So just like you would expect on the phone, it works on the watch. It's just very helpful that it's there. Maps gets some updates. So you'll see that already changed to something different. But if we go into maps, within maps, if we search for maybe a trail that we want to hike, it now has directions for those trails. They're directly within maps and maps actually has hikes for 63 US national parks. You can also save them offline. So if we go in here, we can delete the route or we can scroll down and we have more information about it. And if we keep scrolling, of course we can get directions, but if we want to save it, we can save it and then have it for later. If maybe we're on that trail and we want to hike it. So it's a really nice update to maps, not anything huge, but something that's there.
Something we've had for a while, of course, is our activity rings. And in this update, you can now pause them. If we're in activity, just tap on them. We now have the option to change our goals and also pause the rings. So it says mute coaching and goal tracking while maintaining your move streak. So we can pause for today, pause until Monday, pause for June or pause until you set it. We can also change our goals on a day to day basis. So if we want to change it for more calories, whatever we'd like, we can change that for every day and then it will change as needed. So that's something that's really nice. Just a little bit more customization. Sleep tracking is also now automatic on your watch. So if you're wearing your watch at night, it will be an automatic sleep tracking ability. You don't have to start a sleep focus anymore. It will just work. And Apple has released a new app to go along with this in our app view here. You'll see there's a new app at the bottom. This is called vitals. And you may notice already that the overall vitals app looks like the sensor on the bottom of the iPhone. So if I bring in the other iPhone, we kind of have that look here just as sort of a little bit different and it gives you information about your vitals while you sleep and more. So let's go into that here. So if we go into it, it says it will take seven sleep sessions to establish typical ranges for your overnight vitals. So your typical range will become more precise as you continue to wear your watch to sleep. We'll tap done and you'll see overnight vitals here. Of course, there's no information just yet, but once you use this and you sleep, it will record that and then give you that information. So you'll have a lot of information and it will give you more info about all of the data that you need. Of course, you'll be able to see that in the health app as well. If you want to see that on your iPhone. So if we go into health, the same thing will hold true, but again, you won't have those vitals unless you're actually sleeping regularly. And then it carries over into the app itself. You have the same sort of widget that you have on your iPhone also on the watch and vice versa to go along with activity and working out. There's a new tool to help athletes achieve their goals called training load that's under activity. So if we go into it, you'll see, I've already tapped on it and it says, track your training load, see how your workouts add up over time. So you can decide when to push and when to recover. You can learn more in the fitness app on iPhone. So if we tap continue, you'll see it says no data. Of course, this is brand new and just installed, but you can see viewing all workouts or all day. And if we go back, it's a new option in the upper right. So that will give you the training load information. You can track your effort. So after completing most cardio focused workouts in the workout app, you'll also be able to review a new effort metric. So if we go into workouts here, I have it set to my action button. You'll see it says start a check-in when working out. That's something new we'll talk about in just a moment. But once you've worked out, you'll see more information about it to track your effort overall and how it was. Again, like I said, at the top, you can start a check-in when working out. So check-in is something they brought to the iPhone before that just helps you let someone know. Maybe you go for a run at night. That's Apple's example. And you just want someone to let you know that they're safe, or you want to let someone else know you're safe or where you're going to be. When you say you're going to be, you'll have that option. So it says you can use check-in to automatically notify a friend when your workout has ended and choose what details they can see. If your workout is interrupted, it says to start a check-in swipe, right? During a workout to your workout controls and scroll down to check in. So maybe we'll start a walk here. We'll just start this one. Actually, we'll go back. We'll start an outdoor walk. Give it a second here, and then we can swipe to the right, swipe again here, and then we can actually check in. So if we check in, we can let someone know what's going on. Also within workouts, if maybe you're going kayaking or maybe you're rowing, practicing on the water, it will track that with enhanced GPS activity. So you can see distant and route maps on the water. There's also custom workouts for pool swim. So maybe you want to create a custom workout. You can do that. That's something you have the option for with it at a workout and you can set it up for swimming as well. So you've got all of these different options and you'll see here as we continue to scroll down, we have pool swim. So that's something you can actually track now as well. And then you can see what's coming as far as those workouts go. So maybe you have something where you're training for a triathlon, you have running and then maybe skiing or something else. You can see what's coming up next. So freestyle, then rest or something else like that. Apple's included all of those this year and then also integrated double tap that was available on the Apple watch series nine and Apple watch ultra two, where you can double tap your fingers to activate or deactivate something. They're including that across more apps, whether that's the weather app or developers choose to use it now in their apps. So that's coming to all the different apps. And there's a few different things as well, such as tap to cash. There's updates to ultra wideband home keys. So if maybe you have your watch, 
next to your lock. Instead of having to tap your watch to the lock to actually open it, it will just open as you approach. Another update has to do with cycle tracking. If you're pregnant, you can now list that within cycle tracking within the health app and under cycle tracking, you'll see it says about cycle tracking medications during and after pregnancy. There's a new focus on pregnancy and Apple says when you add a pregnancy in the health app on iPhone or iPad, cycle tracking will now display your gestational age and track your pregnancy across all your health charts. So that's something that's been updated if you want to use cycle tracking within the app. If you're using tickets within the wallet, maybe to go to a show or something along those lines, you'll now get directions to parking lots and show times and more information. That'll roll out probably closer to watchOS 11 when that's available to the public. So you'll have all of those features. Now, as far as using this day today, I've only had it on my watch for one day. So far, it's been pretty stable. I haven't had it crash at all, and I would expect that since there's not a whole lot in this update. We don't have the advanced Siri, Apple intelligence, or anything else right now, and we don't have that across the iPhone or watch, so it's pretty stable, at least on the watch side. So if you're wondering if you should install watchOS 11 on your Apple Watch, I usually recommend against it as there's no way to roll back without bringing it to the Apple store. So typically there is technically a way you could do it, but so far I haven't seen anyone do that yet. So I would probably hold off if you need this for everyday activities or you use it a lot. If you're just using it as a watch and if it maybe has an issue from time to time with bugs, then it's safe to use. Otherwise I would probably avoid it. Of course, as we find more features, there's probably a few different ones here and there. I'll be sure to share those in different videos. And if you've found anything, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Also battery life so far. Well, let's take a look. I'm down to 50%. So I would say it's probably using a good amount of battery right now. So if we go down to battery, we'll go to battery. Again, this is an Apple watch ultra two. I have optimized charging limit on, I charge it every night and we're at 100% capacity. Let me know what you think of watchOS 11 in the comments below and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron, I'll see you next time.